Recombinant DNA technology has gained paramount importance in the 21st century. In times when agriculture is faced with challenges such as drought, diseased crops and poor yield, this technology has a vital role to play in developing better crops. Recombinant DNA technology has also helped produce medicines to prevent and cure diseases such as sickle cell anemia and cystic fibrosis. Recombinant DNA technology is a sophisticated process involving many steps. In order of sequence, these steps are isolation of genetic material or DNA, fragmentation of DNA by restriction endonucleases, amplification of the gene of interest, insertion of recombinant DNA into a host cell or organism, obtaining the foreign gene product, and downstream processing. Let us understand the processes that help carry out the first three steps successfully. The genetic material in most organisms comprises DNA. In recombinant DNA technology, the first step is to select and isolate the piece of DNA of interest to be inserted into a cloning vector. Then, this piece of DNA is cut using restriction enzymes. To cut with restriction enzymes, the DNA should be in a pure form. That is, it should be free of macromolecules. To obtain DNA, a sample of cells is generally blended or ground thoroughly. This helps separate the cells from each other. Now, in order to isolate DNA, enzymes such as lysozyme, cellulase and chitinase are used to treat bacterial cells, plant cells and fungal cells respectively. DNA is enclosed in the cell membranes along with macromolecules such as RNA lipids, polysaccharides and proteins. Genes are located on long chains of DNA which are intertwined with proteins such as histones. These proteins can be removed by treating them with proteas, an enzyme used to break down proteins. On the other hand, RNA can be removed by treating it with ribonuclease. Similarly, other molecules can be removed using specific treatments. Finally, after the addition of chilled ethanol, DNA is isolated as a precipitate. This extracted DNA can be collected using a method called spooling. After isolation of DNA, in the next stage, restriction enzymes are used to cut the purified DNA molecules at specific locations. This cutting results in DNA fragmentation. The fragmented DNA can be separated according to its molecular weight by using a technique known as gel electrophoresis. It is employed to check the progression of restriction enzyme digestion. Typically, the gels used in this process are prepared using agarose. DNA molecules are separated across a pan of gel motivated by an electrical current. Activated electrodes located at either end of the gel chamber produce an electric field. Since DNA is a negatively charged molecule, due to the presence of phosphate groups, it moves towards the positive pole. The separation of fragments occurs according to each fragment's properties which determine how fast the electric field can move the molecules across the gel. The bigger the DNA fragment, the slower it moves towards the positive pole. Therefore, 
Smaller fragments reach the bottom of the gel first. The separated DNA fragments on the gel can be seen only after staining the DNA with ethidium bromide. Now, the separated DNA bands are cut from the agarose gel and extracted from the gel piece. This step is called cution or elution. Stained agarose gel with DNA fragments can be seen under the UV light chamber. Later, the cutout piece of the source DNA or the foreign DNA fragment and the cut plasmid DNA are joined with the help of enzyme DNA ligase. Scientists need a significant number of DNA samples for molecular and genetic studies. Therefore, the next step is the amplification of the gene of interest. The extracted DNA sample can be amplified or used to make multiple copies by using a technique known as polymerase chain reaction or PCR. The PCR technique was developed by Carrie B. Mullis, who was awarded the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 1993. PCR has three steps, denaturation, primer annealing, and extension of primers. In the first step, the isolated or extracted target DNA segment to be amplified is heated to 95 degrees centigrade for denaturation. This leads to the separation of two single strands. In the second step, the solution is cooled to around 55 degrees centigrade in the presence of oligonucleotide primers that are complementary to DNA regions. Now, two oligonucleotide primers anneal or hybridize to each single-stranded template DNA. Annealing sequences are located at the prime ends of two strands of the desired segment. In the third step, the temperature is raised again to 72 degrees centigrade. Now an enzyme called TAC polymerase is used to build two new strands of DNA using the original strands as templates. TAC polymerase is isolated from the bacterium Thermus aquaticus. It helps extend primers towards each other so that the DNA segment lying between two primers is copied. Later, each of these strands can be used to create two new copies every time. The cycle of denaturing and synthesizing of DNA is repeated 30 to 40 times to get 30 to 40 billion copies of the original DNA. The PCR is an automated technique which can be completed in just a few hours. It is executed by a machine called a thermocycler which is programmed to alter the temperature of the reaction every few minutes to allow DNA denaturing and synthesis. These first three steps, isolation of DNA, fragmentation by restriction endonuclease, and amplification of gene of interest, are important steps in recombinant DNA technology that are carried out using specific techniques.